everyone. This week I'm really excited to share with you a framework which follows on from the vlog that I did last week around the single prioritized backlog. <clears throat> Excuse me. And this one is called Capacity to Start. So this particular framework I learned when uh, I'd been asked to run a multi-million dollar portfolio of work. Classic IT department type setup. So we had an IT business unit and their job was to deliver uh, a whole bunch of projects across the organization. Uh, in some cases, they had some of their own money to spend on work, so they'd do things like infrastructure upgrades or data centers and that sort of stuff with their money. Um, but in most cases, their money had been given to them by another business unit that needed to build a piece of technology or some functionality to enable them to deliver uh, in their part of the business. So kind of your classic um, structural setup for an IT department. Uh, big IT department, so multi, multi-million dollar portfolio of work. And uh, the reason I found myself in this situation was that this company wanted to change the way that they were working. And they were trying to get away from big, long projects that took many months or years. Often it was like a three to four year type of cycle on some of these projects because they were quite substantial. Um, so we're trying to get away from that to... How do we deliver more value more often? How do we move into this agile ways of working? How do we get more responsive as an organization? And the seed had been planted in the IT department, uh, which is not unusual when it comes to teaching responsive organizations. Often the IT team, um, I think they're just a little bit more exposed to some of these uh, ideas. Um, they're often a bit quicker to react. Technology just seems to be a natural fit for uh, change and improvement and um and, and changing the way that we work. So I found myself in the situation. We were, um, as I said, we had this the portfolio of work. Uh, we had a pretty good visibility of what was going on, and we were wanting to shift towards trying to get smaller pieces of work out the door more frequently, trying to build projects that were smaller and more independent so that we could deliver more frequently, uh, and then manage that across an entire portfolio where, as I said, like big chunk of work, lots of stuff going on and so there were challenges around the volume of projects that were happening, um, the way that money was being spent and distributed, you know, how do you get consistency across uh, a whole bunch of project managers that are all out there doing their own thing. Um, so lots and lots of challenges but one of the things that we developed, we got through that initial building of the visibility of what was going on and we had a view of what the prioritised backlog looked like um, for one of the buckets of money and um, we kind of came we worked through this idea around um, you know there's a couple of principles that we we're trying to push the portfolio one was around limiting work in progress we wanted to start less and finish more um, I've already talked about that on this blog if you go back and find the past episodes but that idea of limiting work in progress so that you can have clarity of focus um, you bring people around work to get it over the line rather than starting up a whole bunch of new stuff and sort of spreading yourself too thin in this ever perpetuating mesh. Uh, so we, we knew that we wanted to limit the work in progress. We wanted to actively work on being really clear on where we were focused and making sure that we weren't multitasking and spreading ourselves too thin. We knew that was a priority. Uh, we also wanted to get really good visibility of the finances. And one of the things that's not peculiar to IT projects, uh, but it it sort of works quite well as this idea of what if we have stable teams and um, and we build a cost model around essentially a straight line cumulative cost. So we'll drop hardware in where we need it and those big chunky items, but largely we want to have fairly stable teams that we feed work into and, and they kind of churn away on stuff. And so you, you end up with this cumulative straight line spend um, in your project. So we knew we were aiming for that. Um, and we also knew that we wanted to drive the conversation about priority more frequently. We wanted to break work down into small chunks. And so all of this was sort of coming together in, um, in this portfolio where up until the point that we, we introduced this framework, it, things were pretty hectic. You had people making decisions all over the place. Work would sort of start because it was the end, it was the start of a new financial year. That The financial year rolled over, everybody got their cash dropped and like all work started. And then you got these problems where you'd get to the end of the year and because everybody had been prioritizing themselves across multiple things, you'd get to the end of the year and there'd be this kind of bow wave of work that rolled over into the next year because we hadn't finished everything that we wanted to do. So complex environment, you know, trying to solve some of these problems. And 
the framework that we talked about was, okay, for this bucket of money where we've got some control over how and when we spend that cash and when we decide to do work, we want to focus on limiting work in progress. We want to focus on breaking work down into small chunks and we want to focus on having a prioritization conversation regularly so that we can start to um, build responsiveness in the organization. We can give ourselves options around do we keep going, do we pivot, all those sorts of good things. And so the framework that we implemented, we called it capacity to start and it came down to three things. So three questions that you ask before you start a piece of work. We had an idea of the number of pieces of work that we wanted in progress at any time. And essentially, we would wait until somebody had finished a piece of work before bringing the next piece of work in. And, and that decision about bringing in and starting a new piece of work came down to these three questions. So the first question was, do you have the financial capacity to start? Do you have the money available? And so that was about understanding and protecting that straight line cumulative spend graph so that we had predictability around what was going on in our finances. Um, we, we wanted to use that, that cumulative spend line as a bit of a proxy for, again, understanding how much work we had in progress. So if we released all the money at the start of the year and started everything all at once, we knew that we were going to drive that problem of people getting spread too thin. And so by deliberately limiting and um, deliberately trying to stick to that cumulative straight line spend with smaller pieces of work, when you start a new piece of work, you get an uptick in your cost. And then as that piece of work finished, it would sort of flatline. And so you bring in the next piece, you get another uptick and you sort of flatline. And so when you're working with many, many projects, we, we could sort of apply this methodology of do we have financial capacity to start? If we bring in a new piece of work, are we going to tick up over that cumulative spend line or are we going to be underneath it or, or potentially on that straight line spend? So that was the first question. Do we have the financial capacity to start? Because you knew that that would help us to build um, some structure and some visibility and some governance over how much work we were doing at any one point in time. The second question that we asked is, did you have the people capacity to start? So did you have the right skills available? Did you have the right people in your team? Often, you know, even in very large IT departments, this one had many thousands of people um, across both internal employees and, and suppliers, many thousands of people working on this portfolio. Um, often you still come down to, you'll, you'll have a couple of people that have a really core skill set that's pretty specialised. Um, and, and that happens no matter how big your team is. And so that question around do we have the people, do we have the people capacity to start, is really about do we have the skills in our organisation? Um, do we have those teams free? And, and it was tied up with this idea of stable teams, which I'll talk about in another um, video. But this idea of we didn't want to pluck someone who's a specialist skill set and pull them out and put them into another team and, and again, spread them thin over the five or six different projects with, that needed their skill set. We want to keep them in a stable team and then feed work to that team. And so that question around do we have the people capacity to start was not can we pick someone up and pull them and put them over there on this new project. It was about what's that team working on at the moment? Um, have they got enough? Have they got too much? Can we feed work into that team that have got those specialist skill sets? Um, do we even have the skill set to start with? So um, again, that gets into that question of do we have it in-house? Do we go and outsource that skill? Um, do we bring in specialists who have that skill because it's not part of our core capability and we only need it for a short period of time? All of those questions are wrapped up in what's the makeup of the team look like? And what is, the, what is the capacity for us to start this work from a people and skills perspective? So financial was the first question. Do we have the financial capacity to start? Secondly, do we have the people and skills capacity to start? And third, are we actively limiting work in progress so that we can focus on starting less to finish more so we can maintain that clarity of what it is that we're trying to achieve we can give that really structured clarity to our teams around what's important and we don't have all of those competing priorities because everybody's got 15,000 things on their plate and then you end up driving that prioritization discussion down into the individuals and the teams that are working as opposed to holding that conversation at the higher level where you've got full visibility and transparency and then allowing the teams to go and work on that work once we knew that um, we had financial capacity, we had the people and skill sets in the team and we've actively limited the work in progress so that we're not starting a whole bunch of things. 
Um, and that drives some really interesting dynamics around, well, you know, are people busy? Uh, what happens if they're not busy? And, uh, and for us, it was a tool that enabled us to drive a conversation around if that person's not busy or that team's not busy, is it the right thing to do to introduce another new piece of work? Like make that decision consciously? Or is it maybe better to take those people and move them to a place where we've got another hotspot and we've got more work going on than we can handle? Actually physically move those people to the work because that will allow us to get more momentum on a piece of work that's um, maybe it's a bit tricky, it's a bit risky, it's causing us problems. Um, we, we just need more manpower or, um, or people power on that piece of work. So that conversation about are we actively limiting work in progress it was simply about making it visible and making it a conscious decision as to whether or not we started um, and consciously being aware of how many things we had on the go at once and whether or not that was the right number. Um, were we ready to introduce more? Do we need to scale it back? Those sorts of things. So that's it. That's the framework for capacity to start. Three, three questions that you ask before you start work. Number one, do you have the financial capacity to start? Are we following that straight line graph or are we starting a whole bunch of things and dropping all our money in one go and potentially, again, spreading ourselves too thin. Second question, do we have the people and skill sets to start this work? Do we have the people and skill sets capacity to start? And that's really about, um, do we have the right skills available? Yes, but also do we have the right teams coming free where we actually feed that work to them rather than having to pick out a specialist and go and put them somewhere else and, and, um, and start to drive that dynamic of shifting people around and again multitasking rather than the stability of the teams and then question number three are we actively limiting the work in progress so that we're not spreading ourselves too thin we're making conscious conscious decision about how much we've got on our plate at any one time um, and those teams are able to if they're not busy um, you know that question around do we pick something up or do we actually pick those people up and move them to a point where we've got a hot spot and we can focus on getting that piece of work running so that's it from me today. Um, I would love to hear your comments and questions. So please hit me up, drop a comment below, send me an email. Um, always keen to hear how these uh, frameworks play out in your environment. I'm sure you've probably got some kind of variation of this today, whether it be a business case process or an investment decision making process that's going on. Uh, and I hope that those three questions can help you to just start to tweak and, 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 uh, and tune up that conversation around when are we starting work how are we actively um, limiting the work that we're doing so that we're starting less, we're finishing more, we're building that sense of momentum. And we've got the clarity of priorities for our teams when they've got 15,000 things coming at them. They know with good clarity what it is that the organization is choosing to focus time and energy on. Uh, so yeah, that's it from me. I hope you are having an awesome week wherever you are in the world. It's just hit 2021 here in New Zealand. Um, so ringing in the new year. I hope you're spending lots of time with friends and family and you're having an awesome, awesome day. I will see you again next week. Thanks for your time.